Tor Wensland. Thank you, Madam President. Members of the Council, I am devoting my regular briefing on the situation in the Middle East to the 26th report on the implementation of Security Council Resolution 2334. The Secretary General's written report that you have already received covers the period between 14 March and 14 June. Let me start by saying that the two weeks we have had after 14 June has been terrible. Since the submission of the written report, we have seen an alarming spike in violence across the northern and central occupied West Bank, leading to numerous Palestinian and Israeli casualties. Military occupation, including airstrikes in the West Bank, clashes, attacks, and extremely high level of settler related violence have continued and intensified dramatically, alongside the use of more sophisticated weapons on the Palestinians, including IEDs and rocket launch towards Israel. Unless decisive steps are taken now to rein in the violence, there is a significant risk that the events could deteriorate further. The mounting violence is taking place against the backdrop of a deeply worrying settlement related development that altered the already fragile dynamics on the ground, as well as a worrying deterioration in relationship between Israel and Palestinian Authority. In this regard, I welcome today's calls between President Isaac Herzog and Mahmoud Abbas, and between Defense Minister Yuab Galant and PLO Secretary General Hussein Al Sheikh on the occasion of 8 in which, according to Israeli statements released in the media, Israeli officials denounced recent settler attacks in the West Bank and recommended to holding perpetrators accountable. Madam President, on 19 June, an Israeli military operation in the Indian refugee camps in area A of the occupied West Bank led to heavy armed exchanges. An Israeli security force vehicle was struck by Palestinian uh, IEDs injuring eight ISF personnel. Palestinian Islamic Jihad claimed responsibility for the attack. According to the IDF, military helicopters carried out airstrikes, the first in the West Bank since the second Intifada, to facilitate the extraction of military personnel and disabled vehicles. Over the course of the day, seven Palestinians were killed by ISF, including two children and 90 injured. On 20 June, two Palestinians shot and killed four Israeli civilians, including two children, and injured four others in a gas station near a lease settlement north of Ramallah. One of the perpetrators was shot and killed by an Israeli civilian at the scene, while the other was later killed by Israeli forces near Kubas. Hamas claimed the assailants as members and said the attack was a natural response, quote unquote, to the ID, ISF operations in Jenin. From the night of 20 June to 25 June, Israeli settlers perpetrated 28 violent attacks against Palestinian villages across the northern and central occupied West Bank. In total, one Palestinian was killed and 54 others were injured. 37 by ISF and 16 by settlers, or one indeterminate, while four settlers or other Israeli civilians and one ISF personnel was injured by Palestinians. The attacks followed a similar pattern, with large number of settlers, many armed, in some cases escorted by uh, ISF, setting fire to dozens of houses and vehicles, as well as field owned by Palestinians, followed by confrontation, in many cases leading to casualties. In some instances, ISF fired live and rubber coated metal bullets on the Palestinians. Same day, on 20 June, in Alubna, Ashakia, settlers arson also targeted a gas station and three Palestinians, including a child, that were injured. On 21st of June, over 300 settlers again attacked the Palestinian village of Turmuzaya, northwest of Ramallah. In the ensuing confrontation, one Palestinian was shot and killed by the ISF, and eight others were injured by live ammunition. The settler rampage continued that evening in the reef south of Nablus with hundreds of Israeli settlers again.
again attacking Palestinian, the property and other structures, including a school and a mosque. Over the following days, settler attacked villages situa situated between Nablus and Ramallah, including Jalut, Jinjil, the Divan, Ujafa, al Mugayir, and again to Mosiah. To date, Israeli police have said 11 Israelis have been detained, including two off duty IDF personnel, in relation to the various attacks. Amid these developments, on the 9th of 21 June, armed Palestinians fired towards Al Jalame checkpoint north of Jenin. An Israeli drone subsequently launched a missile at their vehicle, killing three Palestinians and one child. The IDF said that the three were responsible for a number of shooting attacks in the West Bank. Two were later claimed as members by Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and the third by Fatah's Al-Aqsa Matur Brigade. On 26 June, Palestinians from the so-called al Brigades attempted to launch two rockets from the Jenin area towards Israel. Both fell short in the occupied Palestinian territory, with no damage or injuries but unprecedented. Reactions by officials to the various incidents are varied, with some rejecting the violence and condemning the vigilantism, others making deep, alarming, inflammatory statements. On 24 June, the IDF, IDF chief of staff, the head of the Israeli security agency and the Israeli police commissioner, issued a joint statement condemning the settler attacks, which they called national nationalist terrorism, and willing to take steps to combat them. These steps include increasing the presence of forces, stepping up arrests, and widening the use of administrative detention against individuals participating in such attacks. The previous day, an Israeli minister and cabinet, mem cabinet member visited the illegal settlement of force and called on settlers to, quote, run to the hilltops and establish additional outposts illegal also into Israeli borders. He also called for a widespread military campaign in the West Bank, urging ISF to, quote, blow up buildings and assassinate terrorists, not one or two, but dozens, hundreds, and if needed, thousands, unquote. The minister called to establish an authorized outpost was later re by the Prime Minister Netanyahu at a cabinet meeting where he said that calls to grab land illegally and actions of grabbing land illegally are unacceptable of course. And the Israeli authorities would act to stop them while promoting settlement expansion in approved locations. Meanwhile, Palestinian factions, including Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad, celebrated the 20 June attack against the Israeli civilians as an, quote, act of heroism and called for additional attacks. Madam President, several concerning developments took place during the reporting period relating to Israeli settlement expansion. On 18 June, the Israeli government approved significant amendments to Israeli settlement planning procedures that could expedite advancement of Israeli settlement plans. The amendments remove into Israeli the requirement for the Ministry of Defense to approve, to approve interim settlement planning stages and to delegate to the minister's, authority, the minister's authority in this regard to the additional Minister of the Defense, currently Bessalel Smotrich. In response to this decision, the Secretary General of the PLO's Executive Committee, Hussein Sheikh, announced in a tweet that the Palestinian authorities would not participate in a long-awaited meeting uh, on the Joint Economic Committee scheduled for 19 June. The meeting had been anticipated as an important opportunity for the parties to discuss urgent steps to improve their economic relationship and deliver on existing commitments. Similarly, plans for a ministerial meeting in the NECA Forum later this summer hosted by Morocco were also postponed. On 26 June, the Israeli Civil Administration Higher Planning Committee reportedly advanced plans for over 5,500 housing units in Israeli settlements in Area C. 
So 750 units near El Guin were added to the agenda after the 20 June attack there and following an announcement by the Prime Minister's office that Israel's answer to terrorism is to strike at it forcefully and build up our confidence. Plans and Vance reported they include the retroactive regularization of the Israeli law of free outposts adjacent to Italy. Madam President, regarding other significant developments, on 16 June, UNRWA announced that it had resumed its services delivery to Palestinian refugees in the West Bank after nearly four months of disruption due to a work dispute with the West Bank Staff Union and the strike. UNRWA operations in the West Bank, including 42 health clinics and 90 schools for more than 40,000 children, have since fully resumed. Madam President, I will not turn to the observation regarding the implementation of the provision of Security Council Resolution 2334 during the reported periods. I remain gravely concerned by the escalation, escalating spiral of violence we are witnessing in the occupied West Bank. I condemn all acts of violence against civilians, including all acts of terror, which exacerbate mistrust and undermine a peaceful resolution to the conflict. The violence must stop, and all perpetrators should be held accountable. I'm particularly alarmed by the extreme level of settler violence, including a large number of settlers, many arms, systematically attacking Palestinian villages, terrorizing communities, sometimes in the proximity uh, of Israeli security forces. Israel, as the occupy, uh, occupying power, has an obligation to protect Palestinians and their property in the occupied Palestinian territory and to ensure prompt, independent, impartial, and transparent investigation into all acts of violence. I reiterate that the security forces must exercise maximum restraint, apply proportional use of force, and use lethal force only when it is strictly unavoidable in order to protect life and conduct thorough, independent, departure and prompt investigation into all instances of possible excessive use of force. Children, in particular, must never be targeted to violence, use, or put to harm's way. I strongly condemn insightful, provocative statements from officials on both sides that further inflame the volatile situation on the ground. Madam President, I remain deeply troubled by the relentless expansion of Israeli settlement to the occupied West Bank, including East Jerusalem, that fuels violence and is impeding access to Palestine, by Palestinians to their land and resources, reshaping the geography of the occupied West Bank and threatening the viability of a future Palestinian state. I note with alarm the recent Israeli government decision which may expedite expansion in Area C. Israeli settlements constitute a flagrant violation of the UN resolution and international law. I call on the government of Israel to cease the advancement of all settlement activity immediately. I call upon the Israeli government to end the demolition of Palestinian-owned property and prevent the possible displacement and eviction of Palestinians in line with the obligation under international humanitarian and international human rights law. I urge Israel to approve plans that would enable Palestinian communities in Area C and East Jerusalem to build legally and address their development needs. In closing, I underscore that the speed and intensity of the security deterioration we have witnessed on the ground are extremely dangerous. The unfolding events seriously challenge border stability and undermine the Palestinian Authority. While the ceasefire following the Gaza escalation in May has helped, there is a constant risk that the event in the West Bank could spill over to Gaza. Likewise, 
The Palestinian Authority's fiscal and institutional challenges exacerbated by funding shortages, including for the UN agencies, that impact the delivery of crucial basic services remain concerning and may further aggravate the deterioration on the ground. Let there be no doubt, neither the PA nor the UN will be able to provide humanitarian assistance without donors urgently stepping up financial support. In recent days and weeks, the UN has remained in close contact with all parties to help restore a relative calm and change the current disastrous trajectory. We must urgently act collectively to stop the violence. At the same time, it's crucial to bring the parties back into a path that addresses the political issues driving the current dynamics, so that the process to resolve the core issues can begin. The deepening occupation, settlement expansion, the high level of violence against civilians, including acts of terror, and critically, the absence of a political horizon are rapidly eroding hope among Palestinians and Israelis and particularly among youth, that the resolution of the conflict is achievable. I urge all leaders to put on the brakes and rethink the options. The choice is clear. Either continue along the downward spiral of violence and provocation, leading to a political vacuum, or to turn towards constructive dialogue linked to concrete actions that can create hope and a political horizon. The UN remains committed to assisting these efforts and to supporting Palestinians and Israelis to resolve the conflict and end the occupation through the achievement of a two-state solution in line with relevant UN resolutions, international law and bilateral agreements.